Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll be discussing about the third problem of today's bi-weekly contest, minimum number of operations to make x and y equal. The problem is a bit easier than the usual third problem of fleet code, but uh, this is a good problem if you are new to DP. Basically, it will help you understand when not to apply recursion. And secondly, this problem involves proving an upper bound and if you know how to find upper bound that technique you can use in lot of other problems as well so with that let's get started the problem states that you are given two positive integers x and y in one operation you can do one of the following four operations you can divide x by 11 if x is a multiple of 11 you can divide x by 5 if x is a multiple of 5 you can decrement x by 1 and you can increment x by 1. Now you have to return the minimum number of operation required to make x equals to y. So let's take an example. Let's say x is 26 and y is 1. Basically you need to convert 26 into 1 with these operations. So one possible sequence of operation could be you first apply third operation that is you decrement 26 by 1 which becomes 25. Then you apply second operation, you divide 25 by 5, it will become 5 and then you again apply second operation, you divide 5 by 5, it will become 1 which is equals to y. So in 3 operation, you are able to convert 26 into 1. You can try out any other sequence of operation. You will not be able to convert 26 into 1 in less than 3 operation and hence the answer here is 3. So hope the problem statement is clear. Now how to solve this? So looking at the problem, you might be thinking, okay, we are given an x, we want to reach y and uh, we are given some transitions. So we can move from x to x divide 11, from x to x divide 5 or we can reach from x to x minus 1 or we can reach x plus 1. So why not have some recursive function, maybe uh, something like this, you will say to find out f of x, I will just try to find the minimum over, sorry, I will just do 1 plus minimum over all of these transitions, fx minus 1, fx plus 1 and if, it, if x is divisible by 5, I will take x by 5 as well. If x is divisible by 11, I will take x by 11 as well. Now this solution will not work. If you don't know why, I would strongly encourage you to pause and try to think about why this not work yourself at least for 5-10 minutes. So hope you thought about it. The reason why this will not work is this recursion will end up in a loop. For example, let's say you want to find out f of 1, right? So for f of 1, you will say, okay, I have to find out f of x plus 1. So for f of 1, you will find out f of 2. Similarly, for f of 2, you first need f of 3 to compute f of, 3, f of 2, right? Similarly, for f of 3, you need x of f of 4. For f of 4, you need f of 5. Now, for f of 5, you need f of 4, 5 and 1 as well. So, for f of 5, you again need f of 1. So, you wanted to calculate f of 1, but to calculate f of 1, you need f of 5. And for f of 5, you need f of 1. So, basically, you will not be able to end this recursion anywhere and hence if you use this simple recursion you will end up uh, in a infinite loop and the solution will TLE. Now how to solve this? The answer is simple. If there is a loop then the simplest thing you can do is apply any sortest path algorithm. So this is a graph right? You are doing recursion over a graph. Instead of doing recursion, you know a source, you know some destination y as well. So you want to go from x to y and you also know from x what all nodes you can visit and whatever you visit, you, al you also know from that node what all nodes you can visit. So you can simply start a sortest path algorithm from the source to the destination and you will get the answer. Now, the graph 
is not finite. So if you have to apply third part, let's say you, you apply Dijkstra, you can apply BFS here as well because the weights, the edge of the graph are unweighted. So all of them have equal weights, you can consider them unweighted and simply figure out what is the minimum number of edge to reach from X to Y and that will give you minimum number of operation as well. So because the weight, uh, gra the graph is unweighted, you can either apply BFS or you can apply Dijkstra. Both will work, right? And the constraint allow both uh, for the given problem. So one of these you can apply, but for both of them, you need a ending point, right? For example, let's say you started from, um, let's say Y is 1 and X is 5, right? Now from 5, you started going X plus 1 always. So you go from 5 to 6 in one move, 6 to 7 in two moves, uh, sorry, from 5 to 7 it will take two moves, from 5 to 8 it will take three moves and so on and so forth. But you have to end somewhere, right? Because otherwise you will keep on going and you will not be able to find out or reach Y anyways. So you have to end somewhere and after that you will try out other possible paths and uh, hence reach Y sometime. So you have to make this infinite graph finite and that's the next problem. So we we know x, we know y, and we also know that we have to apply the path algorithm starting from x. But we need to know an upper bound, let's say u, which will denote if I reach u, I don't have to go further. I can stop the search here and then try out other possible path to reach y, right? So that is something you need to now find out. So what is the value of u? Again, I would encourage you to pause and think for a moment. So hope you have thought about it. The value of u is uh, less than equals to x plus 11, right? Why? Let's uh, see. So v, let's just take first, this is an increment operation. This is a decre decrement operation. So if you keep on decrementing, you know that you will hit zero somewhere and you will stop there because you know that uh, after reaching zero, no matter which operation you apply, one of these operation will, none of these operation will lead you to a positive integer. Only you have to apply increment. And if you are applying increment, then why will you even decrement in the first place? So you have to stop at zero. That is clear. So lower bound is zero, but you have an increment operation here. So you will keep on incrementing and you need an upper bound for your search. So here, what will you do by incrementing? You will not apply this operation for sure, right? If you are incrementing, then um, it means you have to apply one of these operations. You will not apply this operation immediately. That is clear, right? So if I am let's say incrementing is denoted by plus. So if I am doing plus, I will div I will do a division operator after uh, operation afterwards. I will never use minus operator just after plus operator because they will cancel each other, right? So why will you waste operations? So if you apply plus, you have to apply division thereafter. So let's say you start from X. Now you, from X, you can go to X plus one, X plus two, X plus three, X plus four, X plus five. Now you have to apply division operator. Let's talk about division by five. So if X is not divisible by five, one of these four, uh, one of these five values must be divisible by five or rather one of these four values itself must be divisible by five, right? Either X plus one, X plus two, X plus three or X plus four. Now let's say X plus three is divisible by five. So you, apply that operation and you reach somewhere at x plus 3 by 5 right now from here what you can do if you keep on applying division operators afterwards that is fine you will end up at 0 somewhere now after this you can apply increment operator or you can apply decrement operator as well right so the claim is 
once you reach x plus 3 or once you reach a number that is divisible by 5 no there is no advantage in going further right so we have to prove this that if we let's say go in this direction and uh, reach let's say x plus 8 then x whatever answer we get by reaching x plus 8 and then dividing it by 5 is at least as good as whatever answer we get with x plus 3 that's what we need to prove right so with x plus 8 what you have like why will you come to x plus 8 first of all again for division only right you have to divide something uh, we are currently ignoring divide by 11 at all so uh, we just consider plus minus and division by 5 we already know that uh, after plus we will not do minus so from plus we will do a division division operator by 5 so if x plus 3 is divisible by 5 and if we don't stop here and go to x plus 8 and then divide it by 5 what will you get you will get x plus 8 by 5 right now what will be the difference between these two numbers the difference between these two numbers is exactly 1 right so what you are doing you are doing increment operator 5 times and then you are doing a division operator so you are total in total you are doing 6 operations right to get x plus 8 by 5 but with x if you have ignored this 5 operation and rather just divide it by 5 here so one operation here and then increment by 1 so one operation here so with this just two operation you will be able to reach the same x plus 8 by 5 again so why will you waste this extra four operations here so with why will you waste those if you are getting if you are able to reach the same value with less number of operations so that's what you care right the minimum number of operations so that's why we in a way proved by contradiction that there is no advantage real advantage to go further because if you go further down again you will reach one of the values which is close to this x plus 3 by 5 so instead of spending operations in going down further here you will spend five times less operation if you just divide by five and then go further from here right so hope this makes sense in the same fashion you can prove that uh, for division by 11 as well you will go at max up to x plus 11 because after that it doesn't make sense right so that's why for any operation or for when you are trying to find out the sortage position x and y you will go at max to max of x plus y x comma y plus 11 that's the maximum or that's the value of u you have right so this is the maximum upper bound you will search up to and uh, once you reach this you will uh, back you will back and uh, try out other possible paths because you know whatever path you will get after this will not be optimal so just to reiterate the entire solution we have to apply Dijkstra or BFS or any sort of algorithm from x to y and uh, our upper bound is u and we know for y, the value of u is maximum of x, x comma y plus 11 and uh, that's it so if you have watched this point I would encourage you to pause and try to code this entire thing by yourself before looking at the code so we're looking at the code now during the contest I ended up coding Dijkstra but uh, as discussed, you, are, you, you can use BFS as well because the given graph will be um, unweighted or equally weighted. So you can apply the extra. You can apply BFS and that will work as well. So for minimum operation, we just apply the extra starting from this source and we want to reach this destination. So we started the extra, we initialize everything with infinity and only the source to zero. We put everything in the set and started with the nearest node and from that nearest node uh, we covered all its neighbor and based on whether you can reach neighbor in less value from the current node or not you will update the value of the neighbor as well and you will keep on doing this until you exhaust all the node so to cal to recalculate the value of neighbor uh, you will simply check uh, whatever is the known distance to neighbor 
if it is already less than what you will get if you go via current then you will not do anything otherwise you know that there is a smaller distance available so you will erase the previous one and insert the new one so hope this entire solution makes sense if you have any doubts feel free to post them in the comment section below i would be happy to answer if you like the video give thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already i will see you in the next one thank you